But one of the things I wanted to share with you is how we anticipate uh, this uh, plan, what the process is for what remains, you know, before it becomes officially the plan for the campus. If I can get this thing to open. There we go. for the speed of my computer. So this is uh, briefly how we think it's going to work at this point. We are currently at the, uh, at the top here, at the town hall meeting. And following this meeting, we will have an, uh, a meeting of the University Planning Steering Committee. And that committee will review the comments uh, that are made today and the ones that we received earlier and see whether uh, any revisions to the plan are necessary, um, hopefully minor, um, and then the final version would be issued. And the final version then would be the one that the committee as a um, university committee would forward to the president as its recommendation, and at the same time it would be routed to the Senate uh, via the Academic Planning Committee, and the Senate would uh, decide whether or not to endorse it. And so that, hopefully if that vote is positive, that will go along with the recommendation from the steering committee to the president, and the president would take final action on the plan. Um, so, um, you know, we'll try to do that as, as expeditiously as possible. Um, we haven't finalized the, uh, the timeline. It's, I doubt if it's going to come to the Senate before next semester. So uh, that gives us more or less the time frame. It'll, it'll happen sometime next semester that this process will be completed. Right. I see Scott nodding over there. So, <laughs> Okay, so that's basically the process and where we are on it. And uh, as I was saying a minute ago, have been comments uh, posted uh, on CAFE SSU that we will also review um, at our next meeting. So how many of you had a chance to, uh, can I ask for a show of hands, how many people had a chance to look at the, uh, all the stuff that's on the web about the plan? Okay, not everybody, but a few people. Let me just very briefly outline what's there. The front page, if you, this, this page is what, you know, if you start from here and you click on this, you go to this page, and that page shows you an introductory uh, narrative about what the strategic plan is all about, what its main uh, elements are, mission, vision, values, uh, strategic areas, and initiatives. Um, and then it also includes on the side here the, uh, the entire plan, the various areas that we've identified in the developing this plan, as well as the uh, uh, new university-wide fun funding initiatives that came out um, uh, as an outcome of those discussions. So um, as you can see, the major areas are academic programs, community engagement, diversity, 
enrollment management, external support, faculty and staff, infrastructure, quality of the student experience, and sustainability. It's a pretty long list um, for strategic areas, but that's about as far as we could uh, whittle it down to. Uh, I think that when you have a plan with this many areas, uh, the plan really uh, is more of the kind of a plan that gives you a pretty balanced picture of what all, all of the university priorities are, both new and continuing. Uh, so it, it, it should reflect more or less what the institution is, is about uh, in a pretty thorough way. Within each of these areas, then, there are uh, specific goals um, that have been identified, like say in academic programs, uh, we have these objectives here and this goal. And um, providing an excellent teaching and learning environment, providing a nurturing and supportive environment for faculty, um, strengthening our uh, academic programs themselves, establishing cultural competence, um, and uh, responding to the economic and social needs of the community. So those are all objectives within the academic programs area. And each one of these areas have similar objectives. And um, so we, you know, in this plan, as you, um, as you saw on the previous page, has been, we've been working on this for quite a while. This version 6, 1.6, is dated March 2008. So because it is our first uh, university strategic plan that follows this kind of process. Uh, questions of process have, have really taken up as much time, if not more, than questions of substance. And uh, we're all feeling our way through this, and, and I'm uh, very hopeful that once we have gone through a complete cycle, that <coughs> subsequent cycles of revision and updates are going to be more, proceed more smoothly and, and uh, um, more efficiently. Um, but this is, we only have about an hour, correct? And, and we want to focus on getting your feedback and your thoughts. Um, so, and I have Sean here who's taking notes, so your, your thoughts will be captured as well as the video. Um, so I, I would like to uh, open it for comments from any of the other members of the committee. Um, before we open it up to general comments and questions from the audience. So any other committee members want to say anything at this point? Mm -hmm. okay. Scott? Any thoughts? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, Art? Um, I think what's there is pretty good. I think, um, as you said, uh, a lot of issues have to do with process, and I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens when we as you see into the academic senate. Um, I think that the uh, issues that <coughs> I see possibly coming up are, uh, well, actually there are three issues. One is do we need a, a scaled down version to deal with the crisis situation before we get back into growth? Uh, second is, um, are there things that are left out? You know, I, I've, I've looked at many strategic plans for many different universities, and I have yet to see one in which the actual plan itself is prioritized. Um, it seems like there are always, you know, this, the broad, big picture, <coughs> and then the prioritization happens at the level of specific initiatives or uh, budget, al budget uh, allocations that are flow out of the plan. That's where the prioritization is revealed. Rather than in the uh, plan itself, and to that effect, we should also highlight the new university-wide funding initiatives that 
um, we're actually uh, we're continuing to follow um, the again some of these are not currently active because we have no growth um, so but there is a commitment to fund growth uh, fully which means uh, basically buffer the instructional um, growth funding from any kind of off the top uh, type of assessments uh, that are needed for other things um, so that that full funding at, at the SFR of 18.9 uh, with a 75-25 breakdown between full-time and part-time faculty, the commitment to uh, build a $1 million faculty development fund uh, and uh, to, uh, <coughs> to, uh, uh, to go to a, an SFR uh, that is uh, in, uh, at least at the CSU average and working on repairing the base. And these are continuing commitments and in fact to this there is another commitment that was added. Uh, I guess if you would say it would be a way of operationalizing the, the base, the repairing the base is uh, the one million dollar academic quality um, uh, commitment as well uh, by the president. So those are things that uh, one could argue are uh, specific priorities, budget you know, allocation priorities that have come out of uh, looking at uh, our strategic plan on the one hand and um, the the realities on the other so um, so the SFR for example for growth obviously that isn't working until the growth money rem resumes um, so that's where the, the two interface any other comments uh, yes uh, I came into the process rather rather late um, but I, but I want to <coughs> say that I was impressed by the what I saw it was that this, the plan came out of a wide array of separate committees working together to ultimately craft a document that, that I think is, is fine for our purposes. I think it, it, it encompasses a lot of things, but that's what a strategic plan ought to do. Um, I am probably more interested in the, in the campus conversation about, about the I, I feel that the plan is really, really kind of in shape. That we, I think that what this plan, its real strength is not, is, well, certainly its strength is in the specific direction that it will give separate various units. But it, even more than that, the, the, the importance of this plan is the power it has to help us as a campus become a planning community. And I think that, that a lot of the challenges that, that have accrued around the the adjustment of the campus to becoming a plan. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm very interested in, in, in the shape of the talk about the plan personally. And so I, I look forward to continued conversation and certainly in the Senate, I hope that we'll see it for fairness. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I just want to if I just respond to, to Scott. I think that's a very important aspect of, of any process of strategic planning is the process itself, the impact it has on the participants. Uh, it, it, it transforms uh, the um, relationships, the way members of the community interact with each other and helps develop uh, a more um, complex and a comprehensive sort of mental map of the institution that each of its members has. So that's one great benefit. It's ultimately, ultimately the plan itself will never satisfy uh, everybody and may never satisfy anybody fully. Uh, but the process of getting to it meant that everyone has gone through um, a learning process in which they, they start developing uh, new, new skills and, and, <coughs> and approaches to, to handling issues. It helps, it helps us move away from uh, responding only to specific crises or, or, or coming up with ad hoc solutions and looking at our own institution more systematically. So that part of it is, is all to the good. And I would certainly, but one of the things that, that, that is a part of this process and a part of the 
planning culture that um, that you know we're hoping to develop is that we need to be able to achieve closure at some point uh, before starting the cycle again. Um, so it is important, as important as this process is, it's important that the process actually conclude. <laughs> And, and that we actually do get to the point where we adopt the plan, even if it's even if the minute we adopt the plan, we know that it's not uh, as good. A, you know that we could already think of ways in which the plan can be improved. The point is that uh, we 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 are able to start something and finish it, and then start again. It's a process of continuous improvement. But but rather than you know, it's a little bit. And I think uh, academics understand this. You you know, we all went through. Uh, graduate school, and uh, we know of people who were uh, ABDs when we came in and are still ABDs, and they never get to finish their dissertation because they want to make it their magnum opus, and it never happens. And so we have to avoid that syndrome when it comes to generating a university plan as well. Uh, it will never be perfect in the sense that it embodies the perfect shared governance process or, or it has the perfect set of categories. But at some point, you know, we have to put it to bed and start working on version two, uh, you know, for the future. Yes. I'm just wondering if the plan deals with sports as an issue. I know that that could go into every aspect of strategic planning as far as rippling effects. But um, I know within our landscape department, it takes a lot of our time and resources to deal with the sports on campus. Uh, yeah, the question is, does the plan address sports uh, in in any way in explicitly? And I, you know, I, I think it's probably uh, embedded in some some elements, but I don't think that it's was brought out explicitly. Um, well, we have here in the quality of the student experience, for example, would be one way. Uh, for example, if you have objective number three, create communities through activities and programming that develop a sense of belonging and strengthen SSU traditions, that would certainly be one that you know it would be that could be. I mean, it, it's uh, basically whenever something isn't mentioned very specifically, the relationship to a strategic plan is to make the argument that that particular activity supports some objective in the plan, uh, and uh, which is a way of so. It, it would be a problem if this plan didn't have, you know, if, if an activity that we know specifically is critical or we have to have, that suddenly we found that there wasn't a single objective in this plan that it could be said to be advancing. That would be a flaw in the plan, clearly. Um, I don't think that's the case with sports. I think that there, this one and several others, uh, I think that you would be able to see that, that uh, the athletics programs uh, do help advance those objectives. So. Susan? Yeah, um, given the general nature of this, how do you see it implemented in a time of crisis? How do you see it as guiding decisions in a time like we are now, first? And secondly, where is uh, governance and the relationship to joint decision making in your plan? Well, I think that uh, in a time of crisis, obviously, uh, not every objective in a plan could be advanced um, as well as it could be in other times. So there have to be some, some uh, I would call them more tactical choices to be made uh, in terms of what to move forward on. Um, and so that's, a, that's an additional conversation. I think that uh, rather than expect the strategic plan to be able to provide us uh, a a, an algorithm for you know making every choice for us. Uh, it should be more of a framework that can help develop common language when making you know, when carrying on conversations about how to how to make choices. So in that sense, I don't see this a, as a, a hindrance, and in fact, I think it is it helps us develop language and develop a, a framework with a conceptual framework with which to you know have the conversations about those key decisions. Uh, the shared governance um, aspect of it is is not something that's embedded in the plan itself. I would say it's it's more of how how did 
how does the, what was the process by which we arrived at this plan and adopted it, how does that reflect on, on the shared governance process? I, I guess I'm concerned about when you have crisis situations that uh, plans ought to be frameworks that have benchmarks and priorities and then a process for discussing how you're going to then proceed, whether it's to build up or to retrench. But it would seem like that would be helpful. And we're seeing it right now in terms of how these processes are going forward and how the decisions are going to be made of where we're going to cut 1.3 million or more. Yeah. In the I, next few weeks. Right. That's, that's more of an action plan. Uh, I don't think, I, don't, I, do, I doubt if you, you could take any strategic plan. Uh, that any established strategic plan from um, a significant university and figure out what you know what the answers to those questions would be from the plan alone. It's a section in our long-range academic plan. That's it's a, a core universal uh, area that the I think it's something we need to opportunity to do. Obviously, um, I, I would <coughs> submit to you that that it would be something that um, we would have to do in a separate process than the process of developing a, a five-year strategic plan. It would be something that would be uh, involved in uh, our standing uh, budgetary advisory committees, as well as. Certainly for our division, now we have the Joint Committee on Economic Planning that, that is a good vehicle for having those kinds of conversations. Yes? Right, and that's exactly how uh, this is meant, deliberately meant to be general in the sense that it provides a context for more specific planning that takes place in the various uh, units, schools, departments, uh, and, and offices. So it's, it's nice that it's public in every, every area that's on the goal from that and it's initiatives and specific so everybody can see what other areas are doing. It's a lot more specific, really specific and interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you. Um, yes? seems to be 
be log jams in terms of how the managers of staffs are relating to staff and if they feel that a position can be removed temporarily or permanently and then people just get money, more money scattered around and then the job is kind of parsed out, that that's good enough for the department. And meanwhile, the staff, I think, feel more and more that they're not being heard either within unions or without, you know, outside of unions. Anyway, I kind of throw this out there because I feel it more and more within my own union and across the board through discussions on staff like that it's, it's really becoming an issue for staff. That they're feeling defeated, they're feeling tired, they're feeling that there's not going to be much change, particularly in the in the environment. And and how can they communicate that? You know, and to whom can they communicate that? Well, okay, let me just uh, try to uh, capture from your comments, I mean, you, you point your finger on a number of issues, uh, some of them which transcend the process of developing a strategic plan and go to, uh, you know, how do we cope with environmental disruptions that we're facing now. But to the extent that uh, it can infl in inform our strategic plan, I would suggest that some of the issues you're talking about would be the ones that, if we were to address in a systematic way, would in fact be advancing objective number two here under faculty and staff, which is supporting comprehensive professional development and training opportunities uh, for, for staff. Um, and uh, the idea being that, uh, you know, so, some of the, the issues that you're talking about uh, could be addressed better if we had um, some more systematic ways of training, uh, of, uh, of um, orienting staff and, and uh, managers when they come in and those kinds of things. So yeah, that would very much be in line with, with this. So if I encourage staff to put comments about that, those particular issues? Yes, uh, I think that uh, there is beyond this, um, uh, the, the plan's objectives here, we did have an appendix, we have that appendix here, let's see. Yeah, this Appendix C, Potential Initiatives and Activities, uh, is a fairly long list of, mo of more concrete things that could be done, see, for all these areas, including this one. Uh, and uh, that would be a place where concrete suggestions would be added. And so this becomes like a database of possible ways to follow up on. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Laurel.
Mm -hmm. um, any any comments on that on Laurel's question uh, from our other committee members? I have a question that's in line with hers. Since we shifted, we're now in a new, a whole new reality from the time you put this together. Have you guys met to talk about a new reality? You know, we're opening a new chapter, as Jay yeah. Leno says, it's chapter eleven. <laughs> no, we haven't met since the since okay. the the economy tanked. No. <laughs> Art, do you have any thoughts on that? You, you're you're one of the people that have probably has the most continuity besides me on this process. Well, actually, uh, on the collaboration thing, it seems to me we did talk about it at one point. I'm not sure how it got down, but I think any one of the things that the uh, both parts of the conversation are suggesting is that the next meeting is going to have to be a fairly serious meeting. And uh, it, it would be important to have it really well prepared and seriously consider the kinds of comments we're getting in front of and I would expect that there will be some revisions because it's been so long since this draft was last year. So, mm -hmm. so I, uh, I'd like to do it in one meeting, and I'd like to see the meeting be a fairly serious conversation. Um, Barbara? I, I'm just very curious of, of the con how the conversation evolved around the issue of diversity, because it, it seems to me that as in, in the time I've been on this campus, diversity has been kind of a core part of everything we do, a part of the fabric. It's what brought me here in Italy. It was one of the few campuses in 1980 in which there was a strong commitment to diversity. It was, it was a lot of the visioning of the faculty who helped put this place together. And I'm, I'm curious because it feels like diversity ended up as, as its own segment rather than, a, as I saw it initially, and I, I can't keep track of which version I saw last, um, that it seemed like it got set aside and then um, at least in the place it was last year, the, the objectives were fairly narrow in comparison to what we could do and I'm hoping as, as uh, Provost Cho has been talking of the the next big version, but maybe there would be opportunities with these two brand new committees to have some of the language be reflected of, of some of those wider concerns or some of the, the thinking that's gone on. I know that a significant number of the President's Diversity Committee actually attended a conference and, and maybe some of that thinking could be reflected back. I, I would hope diversity would continue to be part of the, the, the woof and the warp of what we do here rather than, and now we're looking at diversity as a separate piece. I can respond directly to that because I was pretty actively involved in that discussion. And, and at one point, the argument was that diversity is such an important aspect of everything that um, do we need a separate section? But then the other argument is if it's really serious, then we need a separate section. But part of the idea behind that was that every strategic goal area would have implications for all the others. And I think in terms of uh, the question that you're raising, I think uh, you know, whether it's this cycle or the next cycle, I think the work of those committees can actually spell out in considerably greater detail how the diversity goal should be reflected in all of the other areas. Or at least it the possibility of an objective in each of those areas yeah. that addresses it, uh, a, a, if not directly, then at least in part. Yeah. yeah, I chaired that task force and talked with a lot of people about diversity and we had, oh, I think maybe 20 initiatives. And so when you just look at the, the goal and the objectives, it really doesn't give you the, the depth of what it is that we really talked about. But I think adding what's more current thinking at this time is a very good idea with the subcommittees working. Just Back there? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Are those objectives available somewhere? Yeah, they're called initiatives. Okay. They're great.
based on comments that others write in, perhaps that can be um, tweaked in some way, if that's really how people feel, or that's really what faculty and staff <coughs> believe should be there. Yeah, let me just uh, make a comment here. that. This process, you know, the committee is a large committee and uh, had a number of different constituencies. And so there was a tendency for this to be the product of a committee. Uh, and so certain edges, certain sharpness was polished off. For example, just to give you an example in terms of Laurel's uh, um, point about the mission. Um, if you go here, um, the vision statement that we um, started out was basically trying to say in a provocative way that we were going to have sort of global impact through our um, our liberal arts based you know uh, undergraduate programs fundamentally and that we were going to be using our professional programs primarily to serve the community and that we were going to act as a university to be a catalyst for the transformation of this region. So the word progress used to be a word transformation, you know, which I think ha has more, but some people objected to it. They didn't want Sonoma County transformed. <laughs> they wanted it to stay the way it was. And so we had to use the word progress to make it sound a little less controversial. So some of that is what, what happens, you know, when you, when you come up with a document that, that has to please all the constituencies uh, in the university. Um, so we, that's why when I, I mentioned earlier that this, there's really two, two I, I see two flavors of strategic plan. One is the one that says, you know, this, is gonna, this plan is going gonna, is gonna to give us a guide <coughs> to what to say no to. So that, <coughs> excuse me, so that we can focus on a few key things that we're going to move on and be really focused about that and get some very significant results. So that's, that's a plan that is relatively narrow but you know but what goes in depth the other kind of plan is the one that basically is represents the entire community gives a, you know appropriate weight to all of the different things that we do day in and day out uh, and also has room for new initiatives and that plan by definition doesn't look doesn't grab you by the throat the way a, a much more narrowly uh, focused one would so that and you know this is one that particularly for the first cycle for an institution it's almost impossible to get away from doing this kind of plan because everybody wants, you know, they, everybody wants their fingerprints on it. Everybody wants to see that somehow or another their their area has received some recognition, and so you go through that, and then over time, as the as we become more comfortable with with strategic planning as a process, and people begin to understand, you know, how we can use it uh, to give us maybe a little more specific guidance uh, in terms of, you know. Let's prioritize three things, you know, for the next, you know, five years, and make some meaningful progress there before we turn to the next three things. Uh, it takes a while for people to come around to that way of looking at the planning uh, process. Yes. Yeah, I just want to make a couple of comments. One is that I think Scott's point about we're learning how to have a culture of planning is, is an important point, and uh, rather than perfecting this document, a lot of it. As soon as this document is perfected, as you said, we start working on version two. Yeah. Uh, the other comment that I wanted to make was on the initiative section. And um, we agreed to keep the initiative section in because it had so many concrete good ideas. But rather than, we didn't want to institutionalize it as part of the core document because just because that's a set of good ideas, there may be other good ideas that would be equally important. So it's more of kind of an information and a stimulus thinking kind of uh, attachment to the plan. Uh, but it's a place where a lot of the concerns that you were raising and others uh, would have come into play. That's this one here. Yes, Scott. Well, uh, just to shift this a little bit, I guess I'm, uh, one of the things that I'm turning my thought thinking to is longer term and um, I think this is a, a question for you especially Eduardo what what would closing the loop on this like how I guess another way of put that would be how would we know and at the end of five years whether our strategic plan worked or um, served its purpose do you know what I mean yeah but um, just a few comments about 
Well, <clears throat> um, I think that um, one way that, that uh, this plan could retrospectively be seen as useful is the extent to which uh, planning and, and uh, decisions um, by divisions and schools, departments, and other units has been framed and influenced by this plan. Uh, that would be a very important outcome. Um, and uh, another one would be if the plan also directly led to uh, the adoption of certain initiatives that could only be pursued university-wide, and we do have some, uh, then you know the that would be an outcome too. The fact that you know this provided us with the, the language and the framework to identify these things as priorities, and they were moved on. Uh, so that'd be another one. And and the other the other one is uh, the more you know sort of process or experiential one, which is to say. If uh, at the end of the, if the next time around that we do when we do this planning, the level of sophistication and um, and effectiveness and intentionality of the process of developing the next plan uh, exhibited by the campus community shows that the first cycle was a positive educational experience for all of us. That'd be another. Outcome. Um, I think I know the answer to this question, but, but do I understand really sort of correctly by that that a, a strategic plan is not really sort of like a set of learning outcomes? Like, it, it's, it's not the kind of thing that at the end of the five years we would look back and say, oh, we give, us a, give ourselves a C on that, or, it, or it, that we did these things, didn't do these things. I mean, what, do you expect that in five years there will be a, a formal kind of assessment process of our strategic plan? Maybe that's more speculative than, than, uh, than prepared for. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, strategic planning was around before the whole learning outcomes thing really took <laughs> off, and so the idea of assessing, uh, I mean, that language was not usually used. Uh, uh, you'd have to clearly, if you've identified some objectives, uh, you want at some point or another to decide, well, how, how are we doing in, in meeting those objectives? Uh, and and uh, in that sense, you know, you, you do have to take the pulse of the institution and figure out whether or not you've, made those, you've met those objectives. Now, I'm not sure that that itself is an assessment of the plan or the process of making the plan. That could very well be just a question of you know, well, did we, you know, were, were we able to get the resources to do it? Did the people that were charged with, uh, with uh, following up on these objectives uh, do, it, do their job? Uh, so basically, the plan gives you a framework for assessing the work of the institution. Um, I suppose to assess the plan itself, you know, would be more like, was the plan confusing? Did it give any did it fail to give to influence in a in a constructive way? You know how people went about prioritizing and, and uh, organizing themselves to to achieve results. One more thing, if I could just weigh in on that, I think that I think this is an important point as we think about purpose of planning. That I think that how and how we build the culture of planning. I would argue very much against seeing this. We obviously at the end, yeah, at various points along the way, have to ask ourselves, how are we doing? You know, kind of, where are we now? But, but it doesn't strike me. It strikes me that that, that, that developing a strategic plan, strategic plan, is use is a useful um, uh, kind of cultural element, and it's and, and it's useful in and of itself. I don't think that it's the same. It doesn't seem to me that it is the same thing as a kind of um, a outcome state. Um, that, that, that would be my position on it. And I, th I think that I think it's the kind of thing that, that it is sort of a temperature taking at a certain moment in time. 
and, and then later on we take the temperature again. But how are we doing? What do we want to do in addition to that? Or furthermore, that it is not a kind of, here's what we want to do, how do we do it? Here's what, do you see what I mean? It's yeah. a sort of a subtle distinction, but that would be, that would be my idea. Well, if we step back farther and we may try to make it a very simple, straightforward sort of metaphor, it would be to say that it's it's kind of a roadmap. Yeah. Uh, where, you know, and in order to have a, a roadmap, you have to know where you are, point A. You have to know where you want to go, point B. And then the roadmap will give you some some sketches of what might be in the way or how you what you have to do to get there. But clearly when you're on the road, you know, you can find out stuff that wasn't on the map. <laughs> yeah. You know, like a tree falls over uh, and you gotta go around, you know, and so that's basically what's how uh, how it works in, in the real world where you actually have to make choices about what road to actually take and so forth, uh, you have to look at, you know, and, and conditions change. So the, the roadmap provides some guide, some framework, but it's not the whole story. Yes? With the demise of the Orange Book, we had, it, it was, however flawed, a structural device around which we could organize our campus and the CSU. In the absence of that, Oh, where in this plan is there an articulation of the parts, particularly the majors and programs relative to the rest of the institution? And how is that, um, the, it's essential to the mission, so how is that inherent in everything that's being done here? Well, that would be an academic plan, is what, what we're talking about, an academic master plan, if you will. Which is not the same as a strategic. The reason the word strategic is put in front of the plan is not just a rhetorical flourish. There's a real difference between a strategic plan and a plan. But shouldn't you define what your academic you should, relationship yeah. is in your strategic plan? That's my point. Uh, not necessarily. Uh, really? I mean, that, that, no, because it's, I mean, it's basically the plan that you're talking about is essentially an inventory of all of our academic programs and a year-by-year -year sort of... No, no, I'm talking about the mission, the, the academic programs at the heart of the mission mm -hmm. that we have. So at, so at in some place in the strategic plan, it ought to be weighted, not articulated, but just there so it can be weighted relative to the other parts. Does that make sense? Or it, my question is, is it, is it in this? You, in JCAP, we talked about nested dolls. And yeah. whatever the outside nesting doll is, is going to constrain every doll within it. And so it's important that the various levels of, are articulated among themselves, and that's what generates my question. Okay, I think it, in that sense, um, the this provides a very broad framework for academic planning to take place within our the Division of Academic Affairs. And it shows up, first of all, there are objectives, overarching objectives here in this section. Um, and then also, even more fundamentally, is in the, um, the mission and the vision. I guess what I found missing there was more of a mention of our liberal arts and sciences mission in key strategic areas. Um, well, if you have some suggestions on how that yeah, might, I, I do. I'd I'll be happy to take them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any other comment, comments, questions?
while you can't stop thinking about, well, specifically, does it spell out that we're going to um, establish a training program for use of Dreamweaver just to come up with a random thing? More, we wanted to say, what is our vision of who we are and everything we do would come out of who we are so that if you see what you want to be rather than what you want to do, it was more a document saying, this is what we want to be, so let this guide our decisions on what we want to do. Which is, I think, why why some people are saying, well, what did you have in mind for this, or how are we going to do that? We, we couldn't stop talking about those things, but I think we intentionally said that that isn't really what we want as part of Very good. Thank you for that comment. Yes? I have a very small comment to go back to the diversity piece, and it's really just to ask a question. As I looked at the um, objective section, there was nothing there about recruiting and retaining a diverse faculty and staff. Okay. Uh, so if you look at the specifics. There it is, right here. That's what we, as Art yeah. said, we do both. We had a separate section, but yeah. also. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted, I, as I'm trying to make sense of it, because I'm, gonna, yeah, yeah, I'm sure that the. Color code yeah. Through, like, is yeah, we're the doing that. You could do that. I, I think I have another question back behind you first. Yes. I just want to comment on Will's comment about the vision, because I, I was struck rereading that over and over and over and over and I think, when I think of the word progress, I think of the 20s. People use that word a lot to talk about, you know, future determinants of the American dream and all of that. And it's really a word that doesn't, I think transformation or something like that, given this Obama age and the rhetoric he's using, the love letter I got from Obama and Michelle last week for donating my 50 bucks to the campaign, it, it made me cry. And I think we can reach for something that's a little bit more um, uh, definitive of who we are as a, I like the idea of community, but then it's like progress out of the community. It just doesn't seem to really be. Well, I, I personally like transformation. Yeah, uh, but, like that. But, and I bet maybe if you went back to the folks that disagreed at that point then, that they wouldn't necessarily disagree now. I know I can I, I can tell you precisely who it was, but I won't say it here. And it's one <laughs> But it was it was a it was a senator. It was a uh, an academic senate member who objected to that. Well, you need to tell. Did you? Uh, well, I just think progress is. Like, yeah, progress is more well. Progress is more mealy mouth because then you can interpret that any way you like. And it's yeah. really The idea was, I mean, and, and that's one of the reasons why I, I didn't push on transformation was because when the word transformation was put in there, it, and I will admit that I came up with the phrasing that included the word transformation initially, what I had in mind was that Sonoma County is, is going through a qualitative transformation as a community right now, and that the university can help guide and steward that process. And the problem is that that makes some people who would like to keep Sonoma County the way it is and not become, you know, because they associate that kind of transformation with growth, you know, and the loss of, you know, pastoral idyllic setting, that kind of thing. So that's, that issue became sort of, you know, um, that's what, that, that, 
that word became associated with that, that and progress problem. didn't hit them in that same way? Progress seemed to be more, um, I mean, less threatening. I don't know. I mean, or maybe they just didn't look at it after they made that comment. <laughs> That's another possibility. <laughs> That was part of it too. Yeah. I'd like to just point out that you're we're focusing on one word in this vision. And my comment is about the whole thing. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that um, you, you know, talking about whether we're going to use the word progress or transformation, to me is missing the point of the whole thing doesn't inspire me personally to any like is it, is this really what Sonoma State wants to be? this vision, I mean, I was, as I was thinking about it, to come to, come to this for a few days, I was thinking, does Sonoma State want to be a leader? Does Sonoma State want to take leadership in the community for, you know, these these interesting inter intersections of things that are happening in the 21st century and how we prepare our students to meet those and how we meet those ourselves? Or, I don't know, I was just trying to think of what is it, you know, yeah, what is our vision of what what do we want to be? And I think that 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 you know maybe you guys have had that discussion a lot in your in your committee, but I'm not sure that I think we've talked around that a lot on campus in different forums, but we've never really addressed that in real specific. And we talked about what made us distinguished as a school and you know things like that, but you know. And it's, and it's an aspiring statement. It's not like who we are now, but who we want to be, you know. It's like, I, I'd really like to see that happen. Let's see if I can find. Well, well right now, it's just the, the residential students in that mission statement, the way it's laid out grammatically. So we need to change that a little bit. Hmm. But the other thing I think we need to also, and I, I agree, the mission statement is not as powerful as one would like it, but we're looking at a strategic plan for the entire university. That's all the academic departments, that's all the administration of finance, every, it's everything. Which means that I know my department's going to go back and we're going to look at what our mission is, what our vision is, and we're going to revamp it. And then the office that I work in will look at our mission and our plans and we'll revamp that. And that's where we can we can hit the students that read it. We can hit the parents when they read it with what we truly are about. We've got a strategic plan again that encompasses the entire university. That's a, that's big. That's huge. How can we how can we come up with the words that's going to encompass everything and not leave anything out? And I don't know if that's a possibility. Well, I'm having problems with my computer here. I was trying to open up <laughs> the Academic Affairs Strategic Plan because I think we had a vision statement there that sort of harkens to some of this, but I can't seem to get it to open. <laughs> yeah, I think we had originally, I, I, I seem to recall phrasing that talked about us, about Sonoma State University being a catalyst for regional transformation. And so the vision captured some of this. Uh, this is another way, by the way, in which the academic, you know, the academic core is embedded in the larger plan. So that's that's a good thing. Yes. Um, I was not on the committee. I have zero position of power on this campus. <laughs> um, I have been involved in a number of. And um, so I would like to say a few things. One is, for this university to be doing this for the first time is a tremendous undertaking. And I applaud the committee for the work that they've done because it's a great first start. It really is. And it isn't going to meet everyone's needs. And it isn't going to be perfect. It's 
not going to have all the right words. It's not going to have all the right things in it. It probably has, has too many things. Next time around, it can be looked at, it can be narrowed, it can be made more perfect. It will never be perfect. I do think it's important in any kind of planning process that you do look at not just the process, how did the process work for us, but also what's in it. And a couple of people have mentioned um, this is very high level. Division schools, departments need to use this document as their tool for creating their mission, their vision, their objectives, and their action plan. And somehow there, there even needs to be some accountability um, that schools and divisions and departments do that. You know, otherwise, why would you spend all this time and effort creating a strategic plan? Um, also, uh, with regard to respect, um, I used to work at a company that had respect as one of its values, and you do tend to think, well, it should be a given, but it's not. It's not a given. It's definitely not a given on this university. I work in a department where we feel a lot of disrespect. We had um, a vote of no confidence for our president. So some people think the president doesn't respect them. Some people don't respect the president. I don't think it's a given on this university. I'm glad it's in there. Um, I, I just, I, you know, ultimately, I want to say yay. Yay, committee, for the work that you've done. And at some point, soon, hopefully, we get to draw the line and call it done. So thanks. Thank you. Thank you for that comment. You said something that I specifically wanted to answer, but I've forgotten what it was. Okay, any other comments? Yeah. Are you going to articulate the process for the future in terms of what you envision planning to be? In other words, we're talking about this now, we're having a forum. But it would be helpful to have built into a strategic plan that annually it will be refreshed, or as we build out our planning structure, that revisiting yes. all parts of it should okay. be included. Yeah, but that, that thank you for that because I do have something else to show you, and specifically on this last comment, the accountability issue, I wanted to respond to, and uh, let me just give you um, an example of how this kind of planning this kind of plan can help with accountability. Uh, in the case of the Academic Affairs Strategic Plan, which we completed a while back, and it's also very general, maybe even too general, um, but nevertheless, uh, it, uh, once the plan was in place, uh, the deans started using it as a framework for articulating their goals and objectives for the coming year. And so it became the basis on which their performance was evaluated by me and the president. And if in fact it was, the president was impressed enough by that, that that's when he asked me to work with Larry in developing this university planning process, essentially following that template. So uh, I think that that's, that's where, where it happens, I think, it's that it gives, it helps give structure to the, the kind of specific planning that has measurable outcomes that people are getting evaluated on uh, regularly. Yes? The, a quick suggestion. When we have the plan in place, it would be really valuable to share it as we have gatherings of new faculty and new employees, mm -hmm. um, that this is what our culture is these are the things we value, here's our vision, and we're thrilled to have you and see the ways in which you can support this. I'm, I'm remembering early on those gatherings, particularly for, for new staff that used to happen on a monthly basis, so that they were included in not just as part of their individual departments, but part of the larger community. And, um, I saw that as a valuable way in which we created community across the divisions. And I, I yearn to see more of that 
more than just you know our annual holiday party, which is probably the largest place in which we all come together. Mm -hmm. um, not all staff are able to attend. It's the faculty more, and staff are invited, but you know our our uh, groundskeepers aren't there, our landscapers aren't there, the custodial staff aren't there. I'm sorry about the this thing being so slow. I, I appreciate that comment, by the way. It's that that's a good, good one to follow up on. I wanted to show. I think this is it. Yeah. Um, this is what the process that we expect to follow. Us. So now this is the way we've articulated it. Um, the plan at the university level, and this one actually is just for academic affairs, but you could, I thought I had another one that showed, instead of academic affairs, it would be a divisional plan, and then instead of schools, it would be, you know, the next level down in terms of the units within a division and so on. And then there's feedback loops going up, so it's bottom up, I mean, top down, bottom up. And then the results of all of this, of all of the um, outcomes of implementing these plans, and which is the, the dotted line, that all that feeds into the internal resources that is one of the two main determinants of what you can do the next cycle, the other one being the external environment. And of course the mission feeds into it as well. So that's the process. And then we have, and I think, you know, Susan, you've seen this. Uh, but other people may have not seen it. I've shown this one already. There is. Um, oh, it goes again. Can you find it? No. Oh, great. Um, There's another one for academic affairs that took some detail at the five-year cycle versus the one-year cycle of planning. And for, for academic affairs, uh, it basically ties into program review as well. Um, I think it's in here. Yeah. Okay. I'll show you this and then I'll stop. Um, It um, it basically has it sh it shows that every there's a five year cycle for strategic planning and then there's an annual cycle for planning uh, all the way down to the department level and the the five year strategic planning cycle in effect is a five year program review cycle for the departments so it all feeds and they're all connecting. Them. Tight. Sorry, I apologize. <laughs> Try this. Maybe it'll work better with this. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm throwing in the towel here on the computer. Uh, and we've probably run out of time. Yes, we have. So thank you very much for all of your input. Appreciate it.